Let me now call on Mr. Louis Ng. So this bill will introduce a framework to facilitate fairer negotiations between landlords and tenants in retail. The bill will mandate compliance with a code of conduct for, for certain retail leases. The code was first released by the Fair Tenancy Industry Committee in 2021. This bill takes the important step of codifying the code. I have three clarifications on the bill. My first point is on the effect of non-compliance with the code of conduct. The bill will require qualifying retail leases to comply with the code and 13 principles, leasing principles under the code. Can MOS clarify if non-compliance with the leasing principles that is not a permitted deviation will mean that the non-compliant term is void? Can MOS also clarify if there are any situations where non-compliance with the leasing principles that is not a permitted deviation will void the entire lease? These clarifications will help parties clearly understand the legal consequences of non-compliance. In situations where a non-compliant term or the entire lease is void, can MOS clarify how the court should determine what sums are due to parties? My second point is on the modification of the codes and the schedules. The requirement that qualifying retail leases must comply will be set up under the codes. It is significant that requirements are set out in the codes that can be modified by the committee with Minister's consent. The modifications do not require approval of Parliament. While there should be flexibility, transparency and certainty for businesses are also important. Can MOS share how frequently the Code of Conduct will be modified? Can MOS also elaborate on the criteria and considerations for modifying the Code of Conduct? Can MOS confirm that appropriate public consultations will be carried out before any modifications are carried out to the Code of Standards, of Conducts and Schedules? Understanding the timeline for potential revisions will help stakeholders anticipate adjustments and plan accordingly. My third and final point is on the scope of premises that are covered. The first and second schedules can be amended to vary the scope of qualifying leases covered by the Act. In addition to this, Section 32 allows the Minister to exempt any persons or premises from the scope of the Act by order in the Gazette. The general power to exempt by order in the Gazette is less likely to attract scrutiny than amending the schedules. Can MOS share under what circumstances might the Minister exercise its power to exempt specific persons or premises under Section 32 instead of amending the schedules? So notwithstanding these clarifications, I stand in support of the Bill.